Hi guys, Jenna Ellis here for Primal 7. I'm a resident physical therapist. We have a few questions that we fielded over the last few weeks from you guys on the internet, Facebook, and Instagram. And we're going to go over a few today. Uh, the next group that we'll go over, I kind of lumped together because they are kind of, um, kind of playing off of each other. So I'll read them all. The first one is from a Facebook group question, and it says, I have hip arthritis with a scheduled hip replacement in September. Any exercise you would think would help me prior to surgery? The second one is, hi, I just ordered my Primal 7 unit yesterday, and I'm looking forward to getting started. I was excited to see this one come out because both of my hips are artificial, and, and it's and over the past 30 years since the first replacement, I've had dip, major differences in my leg lengths. They are now even, but there's still a lot of difficulty associated with it for me. Exercise, when I was able to have a trainer, was quite helpful, but it's no longer an option. Is this program suitable for those with artificial joints? And then the last question that will kind of be lumped together with these uh, comes from, I think it was just an email that somebody emailed us, saying, I have an inflammatory arthritis, and it affects my hips and my shoulders a lot. Are, are, are there any recommended gentle exercises for the hips to try to get moving again? Well, thank you guys so much for your questions. Um, just right off the bat, I do want to say that these knee and hip programs that we've programmed here in the last few weeks are actually very suitable for those who have undergone uh, total hip and total knee replacements and also that have inflammatory arthritis issues. These exercise routines were designed to be short and not have a lot of excess pressure on our joints. I designed them to be kind of like a home exercise program that initially I would give somebody in the clinic to go home and start with at home. So week one in those uh, routines is starting out very easy, normally with isometric exercises, which are holds, to help kind of build muscle memory and get the muscles to fire and remember how to work again properly. Some things that I would definitely think about specifically before your hip replacement is starting to get everything stretched out. So stretching out the front part of your thighs and your hamstrings. You can refer back to our knee and our ham and our hip programs in weeks one, two, and three, and you'll see progressions of each of those exercises. Hamstring stretch is in preparation and your quad stretch is actually in restoration. Pick whichever one you choose, start out slow. If you need to modify or take little breaks and slowly work on up to it, that's completely fine. Same thing with the inflammatory arthritis. If you can only do one exercise a day, that's fine. That's one more than you were doing. Slowly build into things so you don't aggravate your condition. That's the major takeaway here. But in general, these exercises would be good to help start stretching out your hips. Like I mentioned earlier, the hamstring and the quad stretch is in the hip and the knee program. Also, for the other question that had touched on having joint replacements uh, years ago, this is suitable for you. It does give you extra support with the band going around you or gives you a little bit more stability for balance as well. And it helps you go through the range of motion that you are comfortable with. So for instance, if you're doing a squat, if you only wanna go down a quarter of the way, that's completely fine. You're still getting those quadriceps and glutes to fire and you're keeping your core nice and tight so that you get some core stability work as well. So it is a great thing for people to start with pre and post-op. Uh, the one big takeaway for that person that is going to have their total hip replacement is make sure that before you get in the Primal 7 unit after surgery, that you're checking with your physical therapist to make sure that you are past your hip precautions and that you're not breaking any of these. Um, it's hip precautions are different for a posterior hip replacement and for an anterior hip to, uh, replacement. So your physical therapist definitely will grill you on those um, precautions. Just make sure that you have completed your um, physical therapy and your PT has cleared you to start back in the Primal 7 unit or your exercise afterwards. So real quick, I'll show you a few exercises that would be great for the hips for pre and eventually post total hip replacement. So the first one is a bridge. You'll be laying flat on the floor and you'll squeeze your butt and lift up. If you wanna follow along with any of these exercises I do, please look at the knee and the hip program that we will have linked to the bottom of this email or this, this video, and it'll give you a lot more in-depth advice on how to go through these exercises. I'm just gonna demo them real quick so you can put a picture with what you're going to do.
All right, so that one was the bridge. The next one I'm going to do is the single leg march hold. Great for helping strengthen your balance and also your glute medius here on the outside of your butt. That one is really essential for any total hip replacement because it keeps your hips level when you stand on one foot. When do you stand on one foot? We don't always don't stand like a flamingo, but when we walk, we are at one point during our walk standing on that one leg. If it's weak, our hips will dip down to the side like this, putting a lot of excess strain on the outside hip. Look also what it does to my knee. It makes my knee cave in to the side. We don't want that. We wanna make sure our hips are level and everything is staying nice and straight. So that was our single leg march hold. The next one I'll do is standing abduction for the outside of that gluteus medius muscle again. So this one can be a little bit tricky sometimes. It's best if you face forward, facing out from the, hit of the rings first, press your foot down into the band and then turn to the side. That way you're not getting jumbled up in the straps. The big takeaway with that single leg abduction exercise is that you're pushing actively your foot down and into the band. If you just kind of let it rest there, you're working it, but not till its full maximum potential. Make sure you're pushing actively down into that band. If you have any other questions, please refer with these exercises, please refer to our hip and knee programs. There's an introduction and also instruction to the whole entire thing, plus a follow along video that'll help you get into good positions and be able to learn the exercise properly. If you have any questions about anything, please let us know. But in the meantime, keep up your stretching and your strengthening nice and slow and easy. If you only have to do one a day, completely fine. It's up to you, make sure you're listening to your body, but still trying to progress forward at the same time.